Hey everybody, this is Kathy, Crowder's Mountain, North Carolina. Welcome back to another barn quilt video. Um, look what I have for you today. This is an iris and it's a one by three. I'm almost ready to show it to you, but I still have to take the tape up around here. And so I'm gonna do that and hope for the best. You, you see, see how I use both sides of my tape? I just flipped it around. With tape being so high, that sure gets you more mileage out of a roll of tape. Now I pull away from the paint and I let it get real dry really good and dry before I start peeling it. A little spot right there. But here she is. That's our one by three iris. And I'm going to show you the pattern, how I did the pattern. I've done this one three or four different times over the years. And I realized I had never shown you that. So we're going to do an iris this week. And hopefully um, I don't have a, I don't, I think I, I think I gave this one away or sold it, but I, I designed a tulip too. Um, I don't know if you can see it that good, but I designed that tulip too. So it, you know, if you're good at patterns, just take you a snapshot of that one. You don't have to wait till next week, but that'll be next week. But for today, we're going to do our pretty iris. And you know irises come in different colors and stuff like that, so um, you could make yours different if you wanted to. So I'm going to lay it right up here. And I've cut a, a, my flip chart paper that I always work with. I cut it and I had to add six blocks to the top because it wasn't long enough. And I'm going to try this board. This was a barn quilt that I made, and it um, I used the wrong kind of wood. It's when I first started. It's not MDO, and it's not that high-grade um, cabinet paper uh, board that I used in the beginning either. So I knew I knew it was just a test, and it, it failed the test outside. <laughs> so I don't use that anymore. This is MDO. A medium density overlay. It's made with the resin and I put one coat, sometimes I put two coats of kills on the back, but it's got uh, that MDO is, is covered on, it's a two-sided MDO, that's what I was trying to say. So I put two coats of kills for a primer on the front and then one or two on the back it's just according to where it's going to hang. Like this one will be up against the wall. So it won't be, the back won't be exposed to the elements like the front wheel. So I didn't feel like I needed to put two on there. But that's up to you. All right. Let me start off by telling you I'm using this paper. And I'm hoping that you can see these lines right here. I might can zoom in a little bit more. There you go. Okay. So you can see those lines. Now, you don't have to do this. You don't have to block it off one by one all the way up and down that board. You can just measure it off if you want to. Like, I'm going to put a one inch border around here. And I'm going to do that in black. And I'm using these blocks since they're already one inch. I'm just going to go ahead and mark that off. And that kind of gives us an idea of the area in here that we're going to be working with. Whoops. Better hold it down better than that. got out my metal 
yardstick. I probably need to switch off and get, well, I think this is really, this part was the only, only reason I needed that big one anyway. I'm getting a two foot one. So y'all can see what I'm doing. So I got a, a two foot ruler and a one foot two. So uh, two foot and a one foot two. <laughs> say that <laughs> okay so now we've got our border now in this picture let me see if I can find it it was a, one of the first ones I did you see how I blocked off the corners and painted them a different color you can do that if you want to but in the one that I'm showing you I didn't do that but I just wanted to show you that you could. Okay. And before I forget, sorry about I didn't have a video up last week. I got to get my act together somehow. But you know it's getting springtime and I can't stand being inside when it's warm. So I, I've i been playing out in the plants and stuff. I'll show you my plants in a minute. Uh... Let's get this done first, because that's why you came, was to see this pattern, right? All right, I'm going to do different colors of markers like I usually do, so that you can see the pattern. And remember, I'll show you the colors that I used as well. But, when you're doing these leaves, I used a dark green right here just so that you could see it, to give it some dimension. And then three colors of green here. This is the same. This one is a little bit lighter, and that's a little bit lighter than that one. Now, you don't have to have three and four different colors of green. You can mix it. Just mix it up to where if you need touch-ups, you'll have enough to touch up. And then this purple, I'll, tell, I'll show you that right now. This is all one color. It's that uh, purple prince. And I used a bright yellow right here because I wanted it to show up good. And then I put white in here. And then I used just a mint green. It's called uh, sea foam. In the, um, I call it the background. And again, uh, oh, right here, before I forget this. See this part right in here? I just wanted to add some dimension to that and separate the petals. So I put, I don't know if you can see it or not, I had some black over here that I had just finished another barn quilt and I added blue to it. No, I, I, no, I didn't. I added purple to it. So it's like a black purple color and so I used that here. It looks really black. I probably should have put a little more purple in it. It looked good in the cup, but when it dried, it dried almost black. But I still like it. I'm still going to use it. Okay, let's get to this pattern. Okay. Now, Let's draw the leaves first. I wonder if I just need to zero you guys in on half of it at one time so you could see it better. Let me do that. Here's what I did when, when I was drawing mine off on my board. I found the center. I'm going to use that black again for the center. See, the center is going to be 18 inches. So, I use that as just a guideline, not part of a pattern. So, what I'm going to do is just draw a broken line. And you know that that's just 
the guideline. It just kind of helps you divide it. And see this? That's the center. And I knew that's where I needed to start drawing the flower. So let's let's draw these leaves. But I'm going to try to get you down here where you can see it. And it won't be so crooked. I don't know. All right, so we're gonna, we're just gonna count off. So you don't have to draw these blocks. You can measure it if you want to. And there's nothing wrong with that. And you know, you hear people say a grid or a point, about all of them, about all of them you could really grid off, but sometimes they're really, it's just not a need to do all that work. Um, but this paper has the grid already on it. So if you're drawing your pattern first to get the hang of it before you put it on your board, find you some old Christmas paper and cut out a 36 by 12 piece of that Christmas paper and flip it over. Just measure it. Make sure those blocks are an inch. Sometimes they're not quite an inch. Um, okay, I'm going to quit rambling now. I promise. No, I don't. <laughs> you know, I'm going to start talking about something else. Okay, we've got our border here. All right, so we're going to go to the second row right here. I don't know if I got y'all in there or not. There you go. All right, we're going to go to the second row, and we're going to go over three and a half. One, two, three, and there's half of that. So you can just put your ruler down and measure over three and a half. Now we're going to come back over on this other side that y'all can't see. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There you go. All right. So we're going to come back over on this side. We're going to go up. So that second row and measure over three and a half again. Okay. All right, now we're still drawing that first, the, the very first, we're drawing this, okay? That's what we're drawing. Okay, so. Then, we're going to go back up to our middle section, and we're going to go down to one, two, and we're going to go over to one, two, and right in the corner there, we're going to put a tick mark. Now we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to go down to and over to, and right in that corner, we're putting a tick mark. And then, we're going to draw the outside. So this will be... the outside of those leaves. Alright. Now, in the middle here, we're going to go right in the middle. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Right there on that second row, and count up to one, two. So it would be actually the third row up, and we're going to draw. Let's count one, two, three, four, five, six. Right in the middle here, right in the middle of that one inch, we're marking it at a half inch, and then. We're just going to draw from here to here. Whoop. And there you go. That's that first set of leaves. All right, now we're going to go here. We're going to go over one and count up three. One, two, three. 
And right on that line, we're going to put another tick mark. And we're just going to go over to the opposite side and put another tick mark. I'm, I should be making these tick marks big enough to where when you take the screenshot, you can see them better. Because you won't do that when you're putting it on your board, but you just do a little one. All right, let me get another color of green here. Um, all right, see this one? We're going to go down. We're going to go down to the bottom of that same row and count over two. One, two. So right in the corner of that, it'd be the fourth one. One, two, three, four. We're going to put a tick mark. Gonna do the same thing over here. We're going down one and count over two. One, two. So it'd be one, two, three, four. Got it? All right, now we're just drawing that one leaf. See? So this leaf is going to be all this area right here. See that leaf? Now we're going to draw this one. And let's see if I've got another green here. Okay. Now you, you see that mark here? Let's go stay in the same row. And just count up two, one, two. So right on the edge of that one, we're going to put a tick mark. We want to make sure it touches that line instead of going up to the next block. Make sure it touches that line. All right, then let's go up two right here. Make sure I counted that right. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sorry. This is wrong. That's wrong. Go up three. Like go over and one, two, three, and then right right on the edge of that one. So you're still on that same line. I I didn't think that was gonna look right. Once I looked at where the other side was going, the other side's going over here. So where I tried to make that one, just go up two, like one, two, and put it right on that line. Okay. You see that? Now, what we want to go do now is draw, we're going to draw this stem right here. All right, so what I did, see this is 12 inches. So I went in the middle here at six and I drew a tick mark at six and a half and one at five and a half. That's going to give me an inch wide right there. And I'm just going to follow it all the way down here. And I'm making these tick marks here just to let me get it in line. I'm just making these tick marks here so that I know that I got it straight. But I'm not drawing all the way down into there. I'm just, I'm matching it up with the leaf. So this one's going to go a little bit farther. So you see that leaf right there? Now, I got mine a little bit more V-shaped. 
but actually this looks more natural. You see how that's a little bit longer here? And mine, when I drew it out, it's kind of like a perfect V, which is okay either way. I think that would turn out to look more natural than what I did it on there. So, all right, so we, we're finished with the bottom. That wasn't hard. Okay, take a screenshot. So you've got that. And then we're gonna go up here. Okay, so now let's start drawing. Let's start drawing that flower. Okay, we're gonna make another guideline. Like this was our guideline. We're gonna make another one. And it's gonna go from the center of that all the way up to the top. And I'll show you as I go why we needed that. And again, when you're putting it on your board, you may not have to do this. It's just easier for me to explain it to you, I think. If I do it that way. All right, let me get my purple. All right, so we're going to start at the edge of our stem. And we're going to go up. Okay, wait a minute. We're going to start at the ed edge of our stem right here. We're going to go up. One, two, three. We're going up three. One, two, three. And we're going, going, going to our right now. And we're going in three and a half. One, two, three. So again, you would not have to. We went up three. And we're going in three and a half. So you wouldn't have to use these blocks if you didn't want to. Just go up three inches and in three and a half. So that's what we're doing over here on the other side. We're going up three and we're going in three and a half. Right there. And we're making our tick marks. I'm going to make them big enough now. All right. So we're starting at the end of our stems here now. All right. So then we need to go up. And a half. All right, so we're going to go up five and a half. One, two, three, four, five and a half. So if you wanted to find it here, just five and a half. But we're going in to our center here. So this this is the five and a half inch row right in here, okay? The fifth row, well, it's the sixth row. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're at six, and we're going to the center. And you know, I said five and a half up, so we're going to make a mark right there at five and a half. And we're going to make a, a tick mark a one inch tick mark here. See that? All right, so let's draw that piece now. Let me show you what we're drawing. Should have showed you that before. So we went here, we come over, and then we went up into that center. See that? We come, we got to the our stem, we went over, and then we're going to go up to that mark. And we're going to do the same thing over here. All right. 
Now that's just the guideline right here. Actually, it's the top of where the yellow is going to be. We're going to draw that too, but we're, let's draw these other petals first. Okay, so now we need to draw those petals. So one, two, three, four. So from here at the bottom, at this middle section. We're going up one, two, three, four, right here, and putting a tick mark. We're going to do the same thing over here. One, two, three, four, and put a tick mark. All right, then we're going to go up. I have to count in my head. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four. Okay. We're going to line it up with that. And we're going to go over three. So let's, let's put our ruler back here to keep us straight. Because we want to line it up with that top. And we're going to go over three. And we're going to go over three on this side. Now, we just need to measure down two inches right here and put a tick mark. Let's go over here and measure two inches and put a tick mark. So I just measured two inches down here, right? All right, now let's connect that. Looks like little wings when you're first doing it. Ooh. Okay, wait a minute. All right, we needed to do two of them. We went down two inches here, and we're going to go down one inch here. See that? All right. So now. Yeah, I about messed you up, didn't I? That wouldn't been the first time, would it? You get the white out. <laughs> I got to order some more white out, so I can't make no big bunch of boo-boos. All right. Now see how we drew this? These wings. Right here and here. Here and here. And you, make, you can make them as wide or... Uh, skinny as you want to but now here's the rest of the yellow well not the rest of it but the start of it we're just going to draw a line across here and then we're going to go down here and draw that big long triangle right there i need yellow don't I? Not all gonna be color coded, but I'm trying. See, all this is yellow. It's gonna turn out to be yellow. Y'all stop any time now and take screenshots so you can have like step by step instructions if that'll help you. All right, now let's go back to the center here and count down one, two, three. Well, actually, it goes down here. No, it don't. It goes down one inch above that. So from here, go to the next line one, two, three, four. And at the bottom of that fourth one, put you a tick mark. So you're in the center here on our dotted line. Go down four and a half, really, because you're counting that. So one, two, three, four, and that'll be the half. All right, now all we're going to do is go from that tick mark to the side up here of our yellow. See? All right. 
See that? Now you just drew the yellow. Now, for this white, and it'll help to do this first. See this white? And you know, I, I can't draw it in white. You're not going to be able to see it. I'll use red. All we're going to do there, see we're still working right here. We're going to just go from that end up to the middle. From this side up to the middle. And that's going to be white right there. And I probably got off just a little bit here, but you know what I'm talking about. Go to the center up there. Okay, now let's draw some more. A petal. So we've already got all this done and we're right up here now on this section which is not going to be hard. Actually let me show you a trick that I learned while I was doing this. You know you want your petal straight so just uh, let me get the other one. Line this line up, the ruler, with that line. Well, see I got it off a little bit, but I'm going to fix it. That's how I did when, when I was painting that one. I realized that I could have went all the way straight up here and it would look better. So I fixed it with my tape. So I'm going to fix this right now. So you will have a straight line going up here. But to where it starts at is up one and a half. So here's your half. Go up to that one and make you a tick mark. And from there, it's a line. We're going up there. And then we're just coming back down here. And let me get that yellow again. So, I told you I cut, I don't have no more white out. <laughs> there you go. Now let's do this other one that way. That one's, well, it's still off, but I'm going to fix it. I'd rather have that line straight. See how I fixed it when I was drawing it? You can fix things like that with your tape if you see that you got off kilter. And, and that just makes a difference when you're, when you're painting it for that to be lined up that way. It looks more like, it looks more like a barn quilt. You have a clear crisp lines and you're, if you were sewing this, you'd want that seam to go all the way up through there. So we're going to fix it. So don't be afraid to fix things that you see are wrong. So, okay, one and a half. There's the half. Here's the one right, right here where our ruler's at. And we're going up to the top. And then we're going down to that center. Now. When you take that screenshot, you'll know that this line does not exist. Pretend like these two lines don't exist. <laughs> All right, now, we're almost finished. I want to show you how I did this. Again, you don't have to do that, but I felt like it needed to have some kind of dimension to it so it would show out and show off and I could separate these two leaves, petals, I separate those two petals from that bulb coming up through there. So here's what I did and I'll use black for that. And, and I would just say whatever color your iris is going to be, put a little tiny bit of black in it 
and darken it down unless you already have that color, another darker color. Like if you were doing yellow, you probably got a dark yellow too. Alright, so let's go in the corner here. And this is just going to be your preference. But I come up a half inch. And made a tick mark. And I got a half inch over here. And made a tick mark. So all I did was went to that corner. And see that outlined it. See, so that would be black. And again, this is white right in here. All right, now what I did here, I just come down like a fourth of an inch on these because I didn't want it to be that wide. And I just went right up into that corner. See that and there you have it now, I didn't feel like I needed to put it right there because that was you know that was enough contrast now I put gray around my border but you could have done it any color you wanted to so take you a screenshot of that let me get you back over here where you can do that Take your screenshot of that, and you know what? You could save it to your photos and then print it. And you're gonna have a, you're gonna have your pattern to go by, and take a screenshot of that. Okay, and that's it. Uh, let me show you the colors of the paint that I chose. Again, I'm telling you, you don't have to do what I did. <laughs> I'm just showing you what I did. People ask me what colors I used. All right, I used purple prints for my purple. I used Sunspark. These are all Valspar semi-gloss exterior. The ones I'm showing you now. Then for the white, I used Ultra Pure White. Now that is exterior, but it come uh, it's Valspar. She told me that it was exterior, but it's a sample. And she said they were starting to do that now, so I hope she knew, because <laughs> that's what I got. And a lot of people use those samples anyway, so I don't typically. But here's the thing. Y'all know I don't make any money on YouTube. I got a check, finally. And I don't mind telling you. It took three years, three and a half years, and I got a check for $195. I was tickled to death over it. You know, it, it'll buy one sheet of wood. <laughs> That's about it. And maybe one quart of paint. But it don't matter. You know, I love doing this, so, uh, but I really need to cut cost when I can, and I didn't need a whole lot of different colors of white, but I needed some because I want to do that dahlia. You know, that pink dahlia that's in my videos? I can't remember what number it is, what number video it is, but it's a pink dahlia, and I want to do it in white, so I bought maybe four or five whites and then I'm going to do the background in green. I just think that's going to be so pretty. I'm going to get to it, I promise. But I got another barn quilt I want to show y'all I did and that's why I didn't get one up last week. Um, let, let me talk about this paint. Get that done. <laughs> Alright, this dark paint. This dark, I used Vegas Green and then my lighter color I used succulent leaves. You can see it better this way. And then this lighter green is called Bold Avocado. And then my dark green here for the stem was Favorite Green. 
Now, let me turn these back over so that you can see. I put labels on them. And, you know, you got to do something so you can tell what colors you got. All right, for the background here, what I call the background, I use sea foam. And then for my border, I kept trying to debate what color I wanted, what color I wanted. And I didn't want that border to overtake my pattern, my flower. I wanted it to be the focus here. So I just went safely and went with gray. And it's Metropolis gray. So there's my colors. These bottles are from Lola Vefe. If you use code Kathy with a C, 10, you can get 10% off your order. And I'll try to remember to put that in the description. Um, all right. Let me show you. Let me show you that other one that I did. And... You know, I'll probably forget to put that in that description, so hang on just one second. Okay. I knew I'd probably forget to put that in the description, so here is the bottles. It's lolaydefe.com. And it, the code is Kathy10 to get the 10% off. And I wanted to tell you, too, about... Um, I've mentioned Barn Quilts International... It's a Facebook group, and there's another one called Barn Quilts Addicts that uh, you could you could join, and you see all kinds of different patterns. And those folks on there are just so wonderful to answer questions, and uh, I really love it when y'all ask me questions. Uh, the comment section just ask me whatever you want to, and I'm going to answer it. But if there's something that I hadn't dealt with or a pattern that you like and I hadn't put it up yet um, you can find all kind of different things on there and there there's so many talented people on those two groups but anyway and I wanted to tell you too if you see a barn quilt that I've painted and you're interested in purchasing it just uh, email me at kathyrtaylor10 at icloud.com and and I'll uh, give you the information on that. Um, so anyway, I don't do a whole lot of uh, commission work. I do, you know, if somebody asks me to, I will. But I don't market that. I, I, I have enough trouble getting a video up every week. You know, I got, I got a new, uh, well, she's two now. She's two years and three months, a great-grandbaby and another great-grandbaby on the way. So, you know, life, and I love it. <laughs> so, I'm sorry if I miss a week or, or more, but I'm going to try not to. I promise I'm going to try to get my act together. Y'all been so good to watch these. So, anyway, let me show you the one that I promised I'd show you. And this is why I didn't get one up last week. And I I won't be doing this pattern on here because it, it just, who oh, mind-blowing. I don't know if you can even see it all or not. Yeah, there you go. This baby's name is Ruby. And I painted it for a friend of our family's. And... Um, I'll have to ask him if I can say his name on here. He's a um, he's an author and a recording artist, so I'm not sure. I don't know how copyright stuff work. But anyway, I won't be showing you how to do this one because it was hard. But I just wanted you to see it. I love it. I just love the way it turned out. See Ruby's little heart right there. But anyway... I wanted y'all to see it. And if this video hadn't got too long, I'm going to show you what else I'm going to do. See this round? I got my brother to cut it out for me. And so I've got my kills on it. 
and I saw a picture. And it was on one of them coloring out things. Uh, I was looking for inspiration. Well, I didn't mean to find this, but now I can't get it out of my mind. But here's the round, and you see this? Look. Now, I promise I'm not going to skip a video while I'm working on this one because it might take me a long time. But I want to design that and see if I can get it on here. It won't look exactly like that because this is a, it's a color sheet, it's what it is, and I have to make it into a barn quilt. So anyway, hope you have, hope you enjoyed the iris. And stay tuned next week for the tulip. And I'll see y'all in the tulip video.